Yesu, mwana wa Mulungu. Ambuye Yesu, mwana wa Jehova. Ambuye Yesu, mwana wa Mulungu. Ambuye Yesu, mwana Oh, my name is Eugene Wanango Kumbanyo. I'm an actor. I'm a Malawian actor based in SA. For the popular movies that I've done that people may know is District 9, uh, which was nominated for four Oscars. And then I've done South African movies. Uh, there is uh, Jerusalem, there is uh, Paradise Stop, there is Death Race 3, which is another international one. So yeah, I think those four yeah, people may know. But there's other South African movies that I've done, like Algiers, Cry for Freedom with uh, Yvonne Chaka Chaka. And, uh, so many of South African uh, TV series as well. I was born in Zomba, okay? So in Zomba, when we were young, you know, there was a place called Jinkana Club, you know? Our mom used to take us there when Duchi Caesar comes, you know? So we used to watch a lot of Duchi Caesar Jr. And every time I see that guy on stage, I was like, you know, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to be like this guy one day. But that was like theater, you know? And other times we'd go to Chancellor College, you know, at a great hall there. There used to be quite a drama group. And when we watched that, it was like, I'm connecting. This is, this is something that I've always wanted to do. So when I was in high school, I studied at Blanta Secondary School and I'm a secondary school. Then I was writing plays, you know, I was doing performing, but just, just for fun, you understand? You and your friends just, just making people, you know, laugh, you know? Then um, I went to Kenya, Nairobi, that's where I studied computer science. When I was in Kenya, I got involved in two commercials. You know, I got an agent there, then you start going for auditions. Then you'll start learning more about the industry itself. And then when I finished studying my computer science in Kenya, I came to Malawi, I was like, you know what? I really want to get into acting, okay? Because while I was in Kenya still, I, was, I would go to the theaters just to see what happens in the industry. Then I went to South Africa. So this, the first job that I got in this industry was like an extra on Hotel, uh, Hotel Rwanda, you know? That was a beautiful experience for me because it was like, finally I'm connecting with destiny. You know, this is what I've always wanted to do. This is, this is something that, is, that has always been in me, you know? So just being on set, I was an extra, but it, it, to me it was like, this is heaven, you know? So seeing the director, seeing the clapperboard, you know, seeing all these guys, the sound, the what, what, I was like, this is where I want to be. This is what I've always wanted to do. So after Hotel Rwanda, that was the only job that I've ever done as an extra. Then I started getting into South African TV, you know, Generations, you know, Scandal, then uh, Rhythm City, Seven Dylan, and I did commercials. There was a very popular commercial that I did. It was for the Clip Drift Premium, Brandy, you know? So that's when people started seeing my face. And, you know, when they start seeing your first you start they start calling you for jobs then you go for interviews and you go you know we call them auditions you go for auditions and you start getting jobs but we all start from somewhere then yeah then things like district 9 came along you know uh, because of the experience that we had i mean it was uh, for the first time that was like i'm not an extra but i've got this big part that i'm playing and uh, it's a hollowed production it was produced by peter jackson and the respect that they give you on set you know as an actor to be it felt so good so yeah that was a good experience but uh, when it comes to having fun we had a lot of fun when we were shooting death deathless three because we shot it in cape town in so many different places just around Cape Town so it was more like you know sightseeing and just people having fun you know and the driving itself and all that What happened on Hotel Rwanda, of course, there was Don Chido, you know, and Don Chido is a big movie star, you know? So I'm seeing this guy for the first time. I was like, my goodness, here, yeah, I won't be able to do my job. I went to him and I shook his hand. To me, I was like, I'm making a hollowed connection. I'm like, I wanna go to where this guy is coming from. Are you telling me that I can be on set and I see Don Chido like this? So I was like, you know, I kept on smiling like a child, you know, to the point I was telling this other guy that, you know, there was a time that I was looking at Don Chido, you know, and I'm an extra, because we had the background, you know, and I'm just 
just smiling. And then the assistant director was shouting like, no smiling. <laughs> I had to get serious. But yeah, but I mean, come on. I mean, it was just, it was one of those things, but you couldn't help it because you're looking at this guy and this is what you've always wanted to do. And here he is, you know, you get a script I mean, from, 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 from your agent. Okay, this is what they want to, uh, the director want to see you for this, this and that. I mean, that's a casting director. Then you go there, but the, the character itself is a Nigerian, okay? So you got to be able to speak like, you know, you know, West African accent, but at the same time, this is a warlord. So what do you do? You do your research, you know, you watch documentaries, you watch about what's happening in all these war-torn countries, and then that's what helps you to get into the character, you know, it's all by doing research. So as you study the script, then you understand that, okay, this is how I can play him, as according to the pain that he's been through, especially his background, you know? What makes him who he is? Why are they calling him this? What has pushed him to become who he is today? You understand? Because there is always cause and effect, you know? We are all born, you know, we are all full of love, but there comes a time when maybe, you know, certain things have pushed you to the edge and you start behaving in a certain way. So I had to understand, like, this guy, why is he so hardcore like this? So you find out background, his background was that, you know, his family, you know, was butchered, you understand? As a, as a young boy, he was forced to join the rebels, you know? And he watched the sister getting raped and the parents, you know, they were butchered because they were not, they were not, they were not allowing him to join the rebels. They were fighting against it. So they were, they were killed in his own eyes. So he grew up with anger, you understand? To him it was like there was no emotions at all. So that's the guy. So you had to become like that, you know? So it's all in the psyche, you know? You wake on that and that's the guy that you saw on the screen. The Chichewa lines because I had an opportunity to say them you know it's not like something that was in the script but I had to ask for permission from the director that you know what this guy I understand is Nigerian okay but he's a warlord I mean this guy has been he was born there but he's been all over Africa you know so he can speak Zulu I mean we blend in if when you're a gangster you blend in you understand so you come to Malawi then you want to know what Malawi and how they speak and all that just just to blend in so I was like this guy has been to Malawi has been to South Africa that is my own work you know you do your own work as an actor and then you're like, how, as long as it fits into the story. So I was like, yeah, Mr. Director, can I speak my own, you know, language? Because I had an opportunity to speak Nigerian language. There were a lot of Nigerians on set. But I was like, you know what, what this is an opportunity to put my own language on the map, you know? So can't I just use Chichewa? He was like, yeah, go for it. So that's when you hear lines like, you know, you know, person handed as if it, you know, things like that. It felt, it felt so good. And to me, it was like I'm connecting to my homies, you know, I'm connecting to my country, you know, I'm, I'm just saying hi. This is possible, you understand? Because we grew up, when we were watching movies, it was like it's so impossible. When you see all these people, you're like, I, I don't think a Malawian can do this. How do they get such opportunities? How do people end up in movies? This is what I want to do, but how do you get there, you know? So here I am and it's happening, so I'm saying hi to my Malawians. I'm like, you know what, keep dreaming. These things, I mean, it does happen. Here I am, this is evidence, here's a witness. It's happening to me, it can happen to you. The, the reaction was so overwhelming. When, because the movie opened in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the US, you know, when it opened in the US, it opened number one at the box office number one at the box office so it was so huge you know so you malawians had already you know those ones we were going to the cinema because now it was all over like you know people were telling each other no there's some chichewa lines there so i was getting a lot of messages on facebook and then when it opened in the uk and all over the most touching message that i ever received was from this old old guy who's been in netherlands for a long time and it was like you know it was so refreshing taking my family and my grandchildren just to go to the cinema to hear chichewa on a big screen on a big screen that to me was so so humbling i'm telling you and so it was a lot of messages but i was humbled at the same time but i'm glad that you know malawians all over the world you know enjoyed and they connected with the language that was being spoken on the big screen no i'm still single i'm not married yet uh, ready to mingle Looking. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm taking my time, but yeah, anytime soon I'll announce, I'll let you know. Spare time I watch movies, I watch a lot of movies and I read and yeah, we watch soccer just like everybody else. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just a guy next door. Uh, I wouldn't say my ideal kind of woman, I mean, the one that I can connect with, you know. Yeah, but she should be spiritually grounded.
that's, right. that's something. You know, whatever it is that you're carrying, whatever you feel that is your calling, go for it. Because naysayers are always there, you know, but just close your ears, you know, wear your breakers and keep going with to where you're going. As long as you understand your destiny, you'll get there. No, now my brother, now you're pushing things, now you're pushing things. You see now, we just came here for an interview, now you're telling me to speak it another language. That, that is a problem, that is a problem, my friend. Ah, but you, ah, idiot. <laughs> <laughs>